Today, we will learn about the settings of the Netis router. We will discuss how to connect this router with your internet service provider and how to troubleshoot it. Stay tuned for today's video to get detailed information about this router. At the very top, you will find a drop-down link in the middle, from where you can change your router's language. The next option is Internet Connection Type. Through this option, you need to provide the necessary credentials to establish your internet connection. There are three types of connections available. 1. Dynamic IP. No credentials are required, as the IP is assigned automatically. 2. Static IP. You need to manually configure the IP address and other necessary settings. 3. PPPoE requires a username and password provided by your ISP to establish the connection. The next option is Wireless Setup, where you can configure your router's Wi-Fi name, SSID, password, and security settings. The router I am working with does not have a 5G band, so I can only show the 2G band setup. However, both bands are configured in the same way. So, if you learn how to set up 2G, you can easily set up 5G as well. At the very top, in the center, there is a drop-down link that allows you to change the router's language. Multiple language options are available, and you can select your preferred language from there as needed. So far, I have given you an overview of the basic settings. Now, let's explore the advanced settings to see what options are available and how they can be useful for you. I will try to give you a clear understanding of their functions and how you can use them effectively. Inside the advanced settings, on the left side, you will find a button named Status. When you click on Status, the WAN status will appear on the right side. Here, you will see the following details. Connection type, the type of internet connection being used. MAC address, the unique hardware address of your router. IP address, the assigned IP address for your internet connection. Subnet mask, defines the network range. Default gateway, the main route through which data is transmitted. Primary DNS, the main domain name system, DNS, server. Secondary DNS, the backup DNS server. Link status, indicates whether the connection is active or not. The next option is LAN. Here, you can find important details about your local area network, LAN, including LAN MAC address, the unique hardware address of the router's LAN interface. LAN IP address, the router's IP address within the local network. LAN subnet mask, defines the network range for connected devices. DHCP server status, indicates whether the DHCP server, which assigns IP addresses to connected devices, is enabled or disabled. The next option is wireless or Wi-Fi status, where you can check the current status of your wireless network. Here's what you can find. Wireless status, indicates whether Wi-Fi is ON or OFF. SSID name, displays the name of the Wi-Fi network. Wireless connection type, shows the mode in use, e.g., AP for access point. Authentication type, displays the security method used, e.g., WPA2, WPA3. Wireless channel, shows the channel being used for the Wi-Fi signal. MAC address, displays the MAC address assigned to the wireless interface. WPS status, indicates whether Wi-Fi protected setup, WPS, is enabled or disabled. The next option is network, and the first sub-option under it is WAN, wide area network. Here, you will see the WAN type, which includes two options. Wired, a connection using an Ethernet cable. Wireless, a connection without cables, WIFI based one. This means you can set up your internet connection using either a wired connection or a wireless connection. Below, you will find different options for configuring the connection type. Static IP, requires manual entry of an IP address, subnet mask, gateway, and DNS settings. Dynamic IP, DHCP, the router automatically obtains an IP address from the ISP. PPPoE, requires a username and password from your ISP to establish the connection. Here, if you want, you can scan for a wireless signal and use the router as a range extender by connecting to an available access point. If your access point requires a username and password for connection, you can configure it through the one settings from this section. 
Alternatively, if the connection is based on MAC address or IP selection, you can also set it up successfully using this router's options. However, if you want to copy an existing access point and use it as a range extender, you must either know the password of that network or connect to an open network, one without a password. If your one type is set to wired, you can connect to the internet in three ways. Dynamic IP, if your ISP provides a dynamic connection, you don't need to configure anything. Simply selecting dynamic will automatically establish an internet connection. Static IP, if your ISP assigns a static IP, you must manually enter. IP address, subnet mask, DNS server IP, PPPoE, point-to-point -point protocol over Ethernet, if your ISP provides a PPPoE connection, they will give you a username and password. You need to enter these credentials to establish your internet connection. The next option is LAN. Through this option, you can view your LAN IP address. If needed, you can also change your LAN IP address and modify the subnet mask. Since your router is operating in DHCP server mode, you will see that the DHCP server is enabled. If you want to disable the DHCP server, you can turn it off from here. If your router is acting as a client router, you can disable the DHCP server if needed. However, if your router is set up as an access point, turning off the DHCP server may cause connected devices to lose internet access. At the very bottom, you will find the DHCP client list, where you can see details of all connected devices, including IP address, MAC address, device name. The IPTV option is mainly for users who use a set-top box. In this case, one of your LAN ports will be set to bridge mode, allowing the IPTV set-top box to be installed and connected directly through that LAN port. Additionally, this option can be used to forward your ISP connection to another router. This means you can establish a new connection without needing extra cables. To do this, simply connect one LAN port of your current router to the one port of the new router. This allows the new router to receive the internet connection, and you can configure it accordingly. No extra wiring is needed in this setup. Address reservation is a feature that allows you to assign a fixed IP address to specific devices on your network. This ensures that a particular device always gets the same IP address from the router's DHCP server. Why use address reservation? Ensures consistent IP addresses for devices like servers, printers, or security cameras. Helps in port forwarding setups by keeping the same IP for a device. Reduces network conflicts by preventing IP address changes. How to set up address reservation? Go to the LAN settings or DHCP settings in your router. Find the address reservation or static DHCP option. Select the device from the connected device list or manually enter. MAC address of the device. The desired IP address to assign. Click Save Apply to confirm the reservation. Restart the device if needed to get the new reserved IP. Now, every time the device connects, it will always receive the same IP address. Netis Router Operation Mode Netis Reuters support multiple operation modes, allowing you to configure the router based on your network requirements. Below are the common operation modes available. Router Mode Default Mode The router connects directly to your ISP via WAN, wired or wireless. It provides internet access to connected devices using DHCP. Ideal for home or office networks. Bridge Mode Connects two separate networks while allowing data to pass through. Works similarly to repeater mode but can connect different subnets. Ideal for advanced network setups requiring inter-network communication. The next option is wireless, which allows you to configure all WIFI related settings of your router. At the top, you will see wireless status, next to which there are enable and disable options. This means you can enable or disable the wireless function from here. Next, you will find the MAC address section, where you can view the MAC address of your Wi-Fi network. Following that, there is the radio mode option, which indicates the current mode of your router. For example, here it shows access point mode. There are several other modes available in a drop-down menu, from which you can select the mode as per your requirement. If you select repeater mode from here, you will be able to scan for SSIDs. 
This allows you to connect to another router and use it in repeater mode. At the very bottom, you will find the password change section, where you can update your Wi-Fi password. Next, there is the SSID option, which allows you to change the Wi-Fi name. If you want to rename your network, simply edit the SSID field with the new name. You will also see the SSID broadcast option. If you disable this, your Wi-Fi name will be hidden, meaning it won't be visible to others but will remain connected to your device. Further down, there is a region setting, which is set to US by default. You can change it to your preferred region. Then, you have the channel option, which is set to auto by default. You can manually select a specific channel if needed, but keeping it on auto is usually the best choice. Next, there is channel width. Reducing the channel width decreases the Wi-Fi range, while increasing it extends the range. The control sideband setting is best left at its default value. Lastly, in the AP settings, you can adjust wireless security settings. However, it is recommended to keep the default security settings for better protection. With this router, you can easily perform MAC filtering. However, I won't be discussing MAC filtering in detail today, as it would make the video much longer. We will try to release a separate, detailed video on MAC filtering for this router on our channel soon. Stay tuned. To perform MAC filtering, you first need a MAC ID. You can get this by copying a MAC address from the device list on your router's server. Additionally, you can copy the name of the device for easier identification. Once you have the MAC address and device name, follow the method I've shown to adjust the settings. After completing this setup, MAC filtering will be successfully applied. The Wi-Fi protection setup, WPS, setting I believe it should always be disabled. If you enable WPS, a pin is generated, which you can see in the settings. The problem is that some apps can generate this pin using your router's model number, allowing unauthorized users to access your router. For better security, I strongly recommend keeping WPS disabled. Otherwise, anyone with the right tools could gain access to your router using this PIN. With the multi-SSID feature, you can create multiple Wi-Fi names, SSIDs, on a single router. This is especially useful if you want to set up a guest network, keeping guests separate from your main network. Benefits of multi-SSID Guest network Create a separate Wi-Fi for guests, preventing them from accessing your primary network. Security Keeping guests on a different network helps protect your main network's devices. Usage control, you can set different bandwidth limits for different SSIDs. Separate networks for different needs, you can assign different SSIDs for home, office, staff, IoT devices, and more. This feature provides better control, security, and flexibility for managing your network efficiently. In the wireless advanced settings, I believe there's not much that needs to be changed. It's best to keep the default settings as they are. However, if you need more Wi-Fi range, you can increase the transmit power to 100%. On the other hand, if you want to reduce the wireless power, you can lower the transmit power from this setting. This option helps you adjust the Wi-Fi coverage based on your needs. With the wireless client list, you can monitor all devices currently connected to your network. This feature allows you to see which devices are connected to your network, which SSID, Wi-Fi name, they are using to connect, whether they are connected via LAN or Wi-Fi. This helps you keep track of all active connections and manage your network efficiently. With this router, you get powerful features like bandwidth control, port forwarding, virtual server, DMZ, UPnP, port triggering, FTP, and private ports all of which you can easily manage from the router settings. We will cover these features in detail in a dedicated video on our channel soon. So, stay tuned and keep following us for more updates. The next option is access control, where you can manage different types of security and filtering settings. Inside access control, you'll find IP filtering, set rules to allow or block specific IP addresses. IP rule settings, Customize access rules based on IP addresses. IP filter status. Monitor which filters are active. We'll cover these topics in detail in a future video. Next, you have MAC filtering, followed by domain filtering, 
which allows you to block specific websites. For example, if your children use this network and you want to restrict access to certain websites, you can do so using domain filtering. This is a great way to ensure safe browsing. Stay tuned for more details in our upcoming videos. Many users need to use dynamic DNS, DDNS, for virtual servers, remote desktop access, or other special requirements. This router includes various dynamic DNS options, allowing you to activate and configure DDNS directly from the settings. By enabling dynamic DNS, you can access your network remotely using a fixed domain name, even if your ISP provides a changing, dynamic, IP address. This is a very useful feature for remote access and server hosting. In addition to the core features, this router offers several advanced options, including IGMP, an advanced setting for managing multicast traffic efficiently. VPN pass-through, allows you to use a VPN for secure connections. WOL, Wake on LAN, enables remote device wake-up over the network. ARP list, displays a list of all connected devices and their ARP details. Static routing, allows you to manually configure routes for better network management. Port settings, lets you adjust one port speed for better performance. Port mirroring, a useful feature for monitoring network traffic. These settings provide greater control and customization for advanced users,